Okay, this is ICT 460, New Mexico State University, assignment number six. I'm Michael DiMatteo, and I'm sorry, Battlestar Galactica fans, but this unfortunately has nothing to do with the history of the planet COBOL but <laughs> from the series, but is unfortunately about the programming language COBOL, a language which has been used since basically about 1959 when it was first invented. Uh, no discussion about COBOL could be complete without mentioning Grace Hopper, or more precisely, Admiral Grace Hopper, since she's pretty much responsible for uh, inventing this language. Um, Admiral Hopper was born in 1906 in New York. Uh, her first exposure to computers came in 1943 when she joined the U.S. Navy to serve the country during World War II. After receiving a bachelor's and master's degrees and also a doctoral degree in mathematics from Vassar College and Yale University, she was assigned to the Bureau of Ordnance Computation Project at Harvard University, where she worked on Harvard's call laboratories on the Mark series of computers. Now, um, Admiral Hopper's first computer was the Mark I. And if you can imagine, this thing measured 51 feet long, 8 feet tall, and 8 feet wide, and was automatically sequenced to calculate the angles of naval guns during inclement weather. Uh, but you have to think about this, guys. I mean, this machine probably had less computer power than uh, my old Apple II computer from the 80s, and definitely would have a lot less power than just pretty much about any modern device from the iPod to certainly the latest machines would just dwarf it in terms of computing power. At the end of World War II, uh, she was discharged from the Navy but stayed in the reserves joining the Harvard faculty as a fellow, a research fellow to work on the Mark II and Mark III computers. In 1949, she joined the Eckhart Molly Computer Company, which later merged with Sperry Gyroscopes to become Sperry Rand and later Univac. There she worked on the Univac 1, which ran about a thousand times faster than the Mark 1 computer she originally used, but if I remember right, the thing took up about a room. It was at um, Eckhart Marley in 1952 that uh, Admiral Hopper developed the first um, compiler an immediate, an intermediate program that translated mathematical code into ma a machine language. Her first compiler, called the A-0, was followed by A-1 and A-2. So not only did this woman invent the basis for COBOL, but she is responsible for creating the first compilers. Now, beginning with the B-0 compiler, which was later known as Flomatic, she championed the integration of English phrases into programming languages. Uh, the Flumatic was designed to translate a language that could be used for business tasks, such as automatic billing and payroll calculations. Now, Flumatic later became the basis for the universal programming language. Oh, wonderful thing that it is, COBOL. Uh, now, up until that time, computer programs had to be written entirely in assembly code or machine language, which is usually just a series of zeros and ones. So you can imagine how hard it was to try and program some of these earlier computers before she came up with uh, COBOL. Well, the basis for COBOL anyway. Now the specification for COBOL was initially created in 1959. Um, there was a meeting held at the Pentagon on May the 28th and 29th and there it was decided that um, they would set up three committees, the short committee, the intermediate, and the long-range committee, although the last one was never really formed. Um, so I just decided, it figures this language was created by committee. It uh, kind of explains a lot, quite frankly. <laughs> now it was the short-range committee chaired by Joseph Wegstein of the National Bureau of Standards that during the next six months created the description of the first version of COBOL. The committee was formed to recommend a short-range approach to a common business language. Uh, the committee was made up of six members representing six computer manufacturers and three government agencies. Those were Burroughs Corporation, 
IBM, Honeywell, RCA, Sperry Rand, and Sylvania Electronics. The three government agencies were the U.S. Air Force, the David Taylor Model Basin, and the National Bureau of Standards, which is now the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Uh, the Intermediate Committee was formed but never became operational, and in the end, the subcommittee of the Short Range Committee developed the specifications for the COBOL language. Now, the subcommittee was made up of William Selden and Gertrude Tenery of IBM, Howard Bloomberg and Howard Discount of RCA, Vernon Reeves, and James E. Samet of Sylvania electric products. Uh, you, now you know who to blame for COBOL. Um, the name COBOL was decided at the meeting on, eight, on September the 18th, 1959, and the first COBOL compilers were subsequently implemented during the year 1960 on December the 1st and December the 7th. Uh, essentially, the same COBOL programs would run on two different makes of computers, which was actually very revolutionary at the time. An RCA computer and a uh, UNIVAC computer demonstrated this capability. Uh, since 1959, COBOL has undergone several modifications and improvements um, in an attempt to overcome the problem of incompatibility between different versions of COBOL. The National Institute of Standards developed a uh, standard form of the language in 1968. Now this version was known as the American National Standard, or NAS COBOL. In 1974, ANSI published a revised version of uh, NAS COBOL containing a number of features that were not in the original 1968 version. In 1985, uh, ANSI published uh, still another revised version that had more features that were not in the 1974 version and the language still continues to evolve today. This language is quite old and it's still one of the more used languages um, in terms of business and government, which is unbelievable. It's probably been on its way out for years, but you know, like so many things, there are so many programs written in it that it's just, um, it's entrenched everywhere. It doesn't. I don't think it's it's ever going to leave in our lifetimes anyway. In fact, the Garner Group uh, took a survey in 1997, and it found that 80 percent of the world's businesses ran on COBOL, with over 200 billion lines of code in existence, and with an estimated five billion lines of new code being generated. Annually, then that's not bad for a language that was created in 1959. Now, uh, near the end of the 20th century, about 1998, 1999, uh, the year 2000 problem was a focus of significant programming activity in COBOL, sometimes by the same programmers who had developed uh, those programs years and years ago. Lots of COBOL programmers came out of retirement to fit, try and fix the Y2K problem. Now, I remember at the institution I worked for, um, in fact, our main core system relies very heavily on COBOL. So 1998, 1999, we had the original programmers come out from uh, Jack Henry and Associates. These guys had written uh, our Banker 2 software years and years ago, and there they were again um, trying to make sure that all the dates synced up that you know, COBOL and the original COBOL stored dates in two digits, and that would have been a, ma a major problem once uh, the year 2000 rolled over. And there, it required a massive amount of testing to make sure it was uh, working perfectly. I remember New Year's Eve rolled around, and we were there with the original programmers standing around the computer watching it roll over to the next uh, to the next decade. And quite frankly, we were all quite happy when. Everything went off without a hitch and there were no problems. Well, I could go on and on about the history of COBOL, but uh, you probably would die of boredom if I kept on going. Well, that's pretty much about it for me. I know you're probably thankful that this is over. <laughs> I'm Michael DiMatteo, and this was ICT 460 assignment number six. Uh, thanks for listening, and I hope I didn't bore you too much. Bye.